Welcome back. So today I just wanted to briefly talk about um, this app that's been in development for a little while. It's been gaining popularity. They've been doing a ton of development work. And uh, it is a really great tool. So I just wanted to remind people that it's out there. And uh, here's a good use case for it. So for those of you who bought the KZ ASX, who didn't have a great experience with it, or did have a good experience with it and wanted to try something new. So Wavelet. Wavelet is a graphic EQ for Android. And for the longest time, Android was really missing a system-wide EQ program. I use USB Audio Player Pro, which has its own. Other apps had their own. There was sort of a lack of a system-wide EQ for Android. So along came Wavelet. And a really simple Wavelet, you fire it up. Um, if you're like me, you get this guy which means it doesn't detect which music app is running. This happens to be Kobiz, and it doesn't recognize that that one's fired up and playing. So if you go up here and turn on this legacy mode, it will magically acknowledge that uh, there's a music player there, and we'll show you all the options. So what's sort of important here is, one, the graphic equalizer. So as I said, if you just use Wavelet for a graphic EQ, it's great. You can find settings that other people have used, develop your own. Either way, it's, it's kind of a needed component that Android was missing. So what's more important is this integration with AutoEQ. And I believe they include a snapshot of the AutoEQ database from GitHub. It's rolled into the application. And for those of you who aren't familiar with AutoEQ, it's this thing this application that actually creates compensation graphs between frequency graphs as measured by a few very generous people like Critical and Oratory 1990, Interfidelity, Artings. They submit their measurements, AutoEQ compiles them into a GitHub repo. That repo is run against AutoEQ, the application. And what comes out are compensation graphs to essentially turn the as as built you know, IEM frequency graph turned into something that closely matches Harman 2019, which is a target curve, which is whether you believe in Harman or not, it is a you know target graph that a lot of people appear to like. So it is a it is a target. It's not the target, it's not the only target, but it is the one that auto EQ uses for their compensation. So what that really means is when people talk about, oh, there's too much bass here, too much treble, um, auto EQ compares the measured values to harm and EQ, comes up with differences, and then you end up with this compensation graph, which will, um, on some occasions, especially on something like this, the ASX, which had a really strange low end, you know, give you some EQ settings to at least start with to get you back into a better sounding system. So auto EQ is really simple on here. You essentially just click it. And this is says not set. So go here. I already searched for it. So it's actually here. And you do KSS, take KZ ASX. And here is the compensation graph. And as you can see, they really tweak down, you know, the bottom of the base down to about minus five decibels. And that raises, and that goes back all the way up to, I think it was about 900 and something, up to about plus five. And then, you know, if you watched any reviews on the ASX, you'll know that um, this upper upper treble part, let me bring that back, um, was a part that a lot of people complained on as well. But for me, it was more about the bass, because the bass was just overwhelming the mids. And... Um, so that graph takes the bass way down. You get a bunch more clarity. There's more apparent resolution in the lower mids because it's much, it's it's a much cleaner sound than it was kind of stock. So that is cool. I do suggest people try that. So another cool thing you can do if you touch the graph, you can actually um, fade between the auto EQ settings and the normal. So 100, I think I was actually using it somewhere around you know 85-ish or so. Um, that's kind of a user preference deal right there, but um, sort of a handy thing to have anyway. And it's not obvious that uh, that option exists until you click it. 
So this is the, the KZASX. There's about 2,500 2, IEMs in the database. Some are there. There's, there are other KZs. Let me see if I can actually pull, do this. If you type KZ, you'll see a bunch of other KZ models that they have. So there's a bunch of KZ models, not as many TRN models, but it's kind of a hit or miss. But either way, it's a handy option to have. And as more sets are measured, run against auto EQ, we'll have more options. But um, for right now, the ASX and the ASF both have settings, um, compensation graphs, which is really great because of, those are two sets that were essentially pricey that a lot of people weren't unhappy with. And if it's sitting in your drawer, I, I really highly suggest pulling out Wavelet. This part is actually free. There are some add-in, some per purchase options on auto EQ. It's, it's mainly these, the base booster, the virtualizer, and the base tuner. Those are add-ins that you can purchase separately, but auto EQ itself is actually free to use for now anyway. I hope it remains that way as the auto EQ project itself is also free and on GitHub and I'll post links to it. So you don't have to use Wavelet with auto EQ. You could always use auto EQ settings on their own. It's essentially telling you what the, the PEQ settings are for which frequency and which amplitude to change. So um, you can use it in UAPP if that's uh, your thing. That's the way I used to use auto EQ settings. It's just 10 times easier to use it in Wavelet now. So that's it. Just a quick uh, run through on Wavelet KZASX. If you've got one, give that a try and uh, let me know how it works out. So thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time.